Watch this. Let's go to Deuteronomy 1 and 1. What happened to the 12 tribes of Israel? What happened? What happened? And this question will answer who you are. Because you ask our people, who are you? You hear West Indian, Haitian, Jamaican, Guyanese, Panamanian. None of those things existed prior to the 14. Never, ever, you'll read books on them, people like that. Made up. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side of Jordan in the wilderness. The book of Deuteronomy is written to the Israelites. Watch this. Go to chapter 28. I'm going to prove to you in this chapter who you are and what would happen to us as a people. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now, Moses says to the Israelites, if you disobey God's laws, listen good, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Now, I want to go to the slideshow. Read verse 16. We just read 15. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Whatever city we as a people would be in, the Bible says we would be cursed. Now, a lot of times we have individuals amongst us, like um, we have Oprah's, we have Michael Jackson's, we have Michael Jordan's, who are people, who are our people, but they have excelled financially. So we, they say, we don't fit this. Let me inform you of something. You never rise above the status of your people. Never. You might want to step back because you have money in your pocket and think you're better than the rest of us. No. You can have a doctrine of whatever, medicine, divinity. You will still be called. When, when our people do anything, when anything happens with us as a whole, we'll look the same. And I say that because I meet a, little, a lot of people from various social classes. I, I, I meet the educated Negro who goes, no, 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 I'm educated. I'm not like you. I have a doctrine of divinity. I'm great. They love me. I hear it a lot. <laughs> when you read about Christ, what school did Christ go to? He didn't go to no school. Paul, on the other hand, was very educated. Very educated. Paul, he was the most educated of all the apostles. But he humbled himself to the fishermen, Peter, James, and John. They were fishermen. That's, they, they didn't have the social class of Paul. Paul was a Roman citizen. He could travel wherever he wanted. Peter and them could not do that. They didn't have the same class. But Paul loved them. They were his people. Moses says he was the great, greatest under Pharaoh. He had it all. Money, fame, fortune, women. He said, I'm going to give all this up to be with my people. That's the spirit the Most High is looking for. That spirit of Israel, when you love yourself, you love your people. But that high and mighty, oh, no, you Negroes. The Most High can't use you. You don't have that love for your people. You don't have that love for yourself. Read on. Cursed shall thou be in a city. Cursed in a city. The slave market located where Wall Street reached the East River. This is in New York. Uh, was established 1711 as a place where enslaved blacks and Native Americans could be hired or purchased. The first commodity of Wall Street was our people being sold. We were the stocks and bonds. That was our people, our bonds, our bodies. They sold us. They made us work for free labor. Go on. Still dealing with curse in the city. Thousands of blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans were held in bondage and sold in the early colonial settlements of New France, Quebec, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and Upper Canada, Ontario. Next slide. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. These are the fields that you had. Our people were cursed in the field. We had tobacco fields we had to work in, cotton fields, sugar and cane fields. Next clip. Okay, here's more. These are the cotton fields. Read verse 17. Verse 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. This is talking about our businesses. 
Now, you may say, that's what I brought up earlier about that. You always got that one or two individuals who's doing socially well. The curse of Deuteronomy is talking about us as a people, not an individual. Other nations see themselves as a, in a group sense. So-called black people, we're the only ones that like to step outside and go, I'm an individual. No, you're not. No matter, you can have $3 million in the bank. You are me, I am you. Understand that. Go ahead, next clip. Verse 18, please. Yeah. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, meaning your children, go ahead, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, kind means cattle, and the flocks of thy sheep. So we were cursed. If you examine the history of the 1400s, there are books. I have some here. I'm going to bring them out in a moment. Well, these were illustrations of what the conquistadors did to our people throughout Panama, um, Jamaica, um, Central and South America, where they were feeding our children to the dogs, okay? They used to hang up the, the so-called Indians by groups of 13, representing Christ and the 12 apostles. That's the picture here. And they would smash our babies' heads against rocks. These were actual illustrations that the priests did during that turbulent time. Next clip. And cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out when you die. You still have not learned your nationality, the truth of who you are, and what your purpose is. We are cursed when we're born, we're cursed when we die. It has nothing to do with your social, economic, and financial class. Next clip. Read verse 20, Shem. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do. So another curse is that whatever we put our hands to do, the Most High said he would curse it. Go ahead. Until thou be destroyed. Destroyed meaning as a people. Go ahead. And until thou perish quickly. Go ahead. Because of the wickedness of thy doings, where, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Next clip. Okay, this goes back to Wall Street. What happened to Black Wall Street, Tulsa, Oklahoma. See the smoke? This is what I was making reference to about them dropping dynamite on our people. Okay. Next clip. Verse 21, Shem. The Lord shall make the, the pestilence cleave unto thee until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. Now, we possess the land of Israel. We had that. We got plagued. And when our people was on this side of the world, the so-called Native American Indian. When you read about the history of uh, Plymouth Rock Thanksgiving, how the um, Edomites, the British, gave them blankets infected with smallpox. They got them so sick to the point they were able to destroy them and put them on reservations and take the land which they dubbed America. That's, how, that's what Thanksgiving is about. Many of our people celebrate Thanksgiving not realizing the history behind that holiday. It's a murderous and bloody day. And they thank God for it. Read. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Verse 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. The heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. Now this is a similar to, this has twofold meaning. Read the verse again. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Now over our heads they would have brass bells during the time of our captivity. And we had iron along our feet. Okay, next verse. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. It shall be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. Our slavery, we were removed biblically into all the kingdoms of the earth. All of them. That includes, yes, China. We were made slaves there too. That's more history that they don't tell you about in the history classes. We built the great walls of China. That was our people. We, when the Bible says we will be removed into all kingdoms, it means that. It means everywhere they made us slaves. We were a great commodity. Why? Because we were God-chosen people who broke the commandments. We didn't want to hear the laws Moses gave us. Read. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air. One moment. Here's more proof. Okay. You got uh, when they took out people 
from Sierra Leone, Senegal, the Congo, Angola. I'm going to go into the history of how we got here to Africa, what we call Africa today, which biblically is called the land of Ham. But I'm going to show you biblically how we got here. If we are the Israelites, how did we get here? Israel would be here. How do we get here? And then we were removed to all these places here and here up throughout Europe as well, and China and Russia. How did we get there? I'm going to go over that in a few minutes. Just bear with me. Go ahead. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. So these are more uh, things of how, these are actual, this is an actual drawing of how the beasts of the field ate our bodies. Go ahead. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou can, can, canst be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart. So, the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of madness. A lot of time when we call someone mad, we say that they're crazy. Many, our people, many of us suffer from many psychological defects. And we're upset in, at the th conditions of what we see in the world. Give me the next clip. Verse 29, show. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper. In thy ways. Oh, you know what I want to pause there? And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Again, it's not talking about the individual. It's talking about us as a collective, as a nation. Go ahead, read. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. You know why that's important? We had many great leaders rise up to try to save us. You had Marcus Garvey. You had Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Uh, you had Harriet Tubman. Many of them, but the Bible prophesied, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Meaning that's, this curse would stick on us as a whole, collectively. There's no man that can rise up and save us. No matter how great his status is, he cannot. There's one Savior, and that's Christ. He's the only Savior. Amen. Okay. Next clip. Read. Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. This goes into adultery. This also goes into when the slave master was raping our women. Go ahead, read. Thou shalt build a house. Many of the homes throughout Can uh, Canada, America, Central and South America that we were forced to build. Go ahead. And thou shalt not dwell therein. We built them, but we don't dwell therein. Go ahead. Thou shalt plant a vineyard. We planted many vineyards in this land. Go ahead. And shall not gather the grapes thereof. Meaning we, not, we would not benefit the financial resources of it. Go ahead. Thy ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face. Watch this. And shall not be restored to thee. You know why I'm going to pause here where it says, Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. We've been crying for 40 acres and a mule forever. When are you going to give it to us? The Bible says it's not going to be restored to you. Read. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies. Notice the wording, go ahead. And thou shalt have none to rescue them. Watch this. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So now, we're going to get in, as we read this chapter, it's going to get more specific. Because I, I, I'm going to tell you the mindset of our people. When we read this on the street, many times our people are the first ones to say, Everybody was a slave! Everybody. As we read down, it's going to tell you what people this is talking about. Because there's a difference between being an indentured servant and a slave. Two different things. Two different things. Read. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So let's pause there. This doesn't say thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto your own people. It says another people, meaning another race. Your race would be given to another race. Go ahead. And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. When your sons and daughters was taken from you, all see many of the movies. We did not have the economic might or military might to get our sons and daughters back. Children born in New Orleans were sent to someplace on the other side of the country. And we never got them back. That's why loving your neighbor is so important. Many of us, and we always say... Sometimes you see people that look like somebody in your family. It all goes back there. 
when we were sold to different parts of the country. And you'll walk down the street one day and see somebody that looks like your aunt or your uncle, but they got the same face. Hmm. But that hatred we have for one another, many times, you're gonna find out they, we are our brother's keeper. We must learn to be our brother's keeper. We are one people, read. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Watch this. And there shall be no might in thine hand. We have no might to return our people as a nation. We don't have the economic resources or the military might to overcome. Next clip, verse 33, sure. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Pause. So again, he's letting you know the fruit of your land and all your labors, all that you work for, shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Meaning they're going to take it all that you work for. They're going to take it. Go ahead. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Mm. Go ahead. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. That's why a lot of times we ain't, we watch the news and we see many injustices. Now believe me, I'm not excusing any of the evils we do as a people, not at all. But when I see injustice done to our people, I know I'm not the only one that be mad about it. I know many times we sit at home and we are angry. And we go to work and are silent, or else we'll, we lose our jobs, we lose our careers. So we stay silent, but the fact that we're mad for the things we see doesn't change. It's still there, we're angry. Next clip, next verse. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore box that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. Now this is a plague which goes back to what the British did throughout uh, America, North, Central, and South, when he infected the Indians with smallpox. Next clip. Read. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. I want to pause there, because when we came from the various places that they got us to as slaves, we had kings. We had, it was not a group of uneducated blacks that they brought over on the slave ships, and I'm gonna show you that too. But it says, the king which thou shalt set over unto a nation, which, read that again, Sean. The Lord shall bring thee, and thy king which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there thou shalt serve other gods, wood, and stone. Back. And there thou shalt serve other gods, wood and stone. In um, Brazil, there's a famous stone statue of the Caucasian man as Jesus. And this Caucasian man, which I forgot to mention earlier, has a real name. When you get a book by Marion Johnson called The Borgias, y'all should write that down. Examine what I'm telling you. Marion Johnson wrote a book entitled The Bourgeois. There's another one by Sarah Bradford, where she said the Renaissance Pope, Alexander VI of Rome, thank you, Alexander VI of Rome, he had a son called Caesar Borgia. The Borgia family hired Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo to do Renaissance images throughout all Europe and throughout the earth. These are the Caucasian images you see, and that occurred in the late 1400s. That's why you see this man's image everywhere, and our people love this. That's why many today, we, many of our people, it's cool to wear these bracelets with these images. Wood and stone, the religion of Islam, uh, where they worship was called the Kaaba stone. When you go to make your Hajj, I don't know how many of you were ever into Islam, you, had to, you have to make a Hajj in your lifetime at least once, where you have to kiss the Kaaba stone, which is a black rock, and give homage to Allah. All that is idolatry. But the Most High prophesied when you go into slavery, you would serve other gods, wood gods, and stone gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Read on, Shem. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whether the Lord shall lead thee. Let's examine this. Thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. Let's pause here. A proverb is like a, a witty saying, a byword being called outside of your name. This verse is explaining 
your nationalities would be changed. They would no longer call you Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh. You would be known by proverb names, by word names. For example, West Indian. That's what I said. A lot of people don't know what West Indian means. West Servant. And you're proud. When I, I, just, I do security at the West Indian Day Parade, uh, uh, memorial, oh God, things I see in that parade. It is crazy and insane. But they have, we have all these various islands, and they're so proud. The biggest part of that parade, the Haitians have the largest float. And they're waving a flag and dancing, the women are daggering on the ground. What the hell is this? And they have carnival days because they leave their husband or wife and have sex with someone else, then nine months later, they have a baby. They call them carnival babies. But this proverb and byword runs deep. Your names. Yes, some of you here may be named, for example, George Washington. Washington is the family name that owns you. Whatever your last name is, is the family that owns your ancestors. So your names, your nationality is not your own, neither your family names. Name one, name any family name, it's not yours. It was put upon you by your oppressor. And when you read the history, they branded their name in your back. So when you ran away, they would say, he belongs to the Johnsons. She belongs to the Lincolns. And we glorify these names, we have family reunions. That's a joke. That's an astonishment. It's like, are you kidding me? Your family reunion, the Johnsons, the Willoughby's, the Dunbar's, look at this. Those names are not yours. They are all goes right back to Deuteronomy 28. That's why I said, it doesn't matter if you don't believe it. Did this happen to us? Yes. Everything the Bible says did happen and will happen, whether you accept it or not. You can go in your Christian church tomorrow, you know, whatever day, Sunday, or tomorrow, Sunday, and whenever you go, and go back to sleep and try to ignore and think that this is all irrelevant. It's very relevant for us today. Very, very relevant. Next verse. Verse 37, uh, verse 38. Oh, wait a minute. Go back one second. Go back, go back. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Whenever we went, we were known as Negroes. <laughs> they all for some reason call us that. You go to China, oh, Negro. Go to Japan, oh, Negro. Go to Philippines, oh, Negro. Whenever we go, we are dubbed by these names. Not a new one is black. Oh, black, 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 black. That's not a race. It's a color, people. It's a color. It's not a race of people. So it says, among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Wherever we went, we were dubbed with these proverb and byword names, personal family names, and national names. Understand, Afro-American, that's a byword, a proverb. Next clip. An astonishment. You see the young people today, I don't know if any of y'all ever watched these rap, where it's cool now for young men to walk around with their underwear showing and to cross-dress and to dress like, y'all know what they call this. Yes, that's sexy, okay. Let's see, but this is an astonishment. Go ahead, next clip, let me see. A proverb, here's some proverbs. A Mexican and, I'm gonna use the word nigger, okay, real quick so you all must understand. Get Acts 13 and one real quick, Acts 13 and one. The word nigger really bothers people. There's a book called, hmm, it's written by J.A. Rogers. I believe the title is history. I can't recall off the top. But anyway, it tells you how to pronounce the name in Acts 13 and 1, and it goes into how they changed the pronunciation. Acts 13 and 1, read that for me real quick. Now there were in the church that was set at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called nigger. Right. So people get upset when you read that and go, no, it's nigger. That's the new way to pronounce it. But the old way was always near. And it means black. So again, there, and I've only covered the surface in terms of color in the Bible. So that tells me there were certain prophets and teachers as this brother that was called black. <laughs> I'll show you that in church. No, maybe that's his condition. No, it ain't his condition. It's telling me he was called black. So anyway, back to the proverb. I'm going back here to Deuteronomy. A Mexican and a nigger are riding in a car. Who's driving? A cop. That's a joke. It's a Proverbs. What do black men do after sex? 15 years of life. It's a proverb. Meaning we, they have these funny sayings about us. Um, let's go to the next clip. 
a byword, blacks. They call us ape, colored, spook, coon. Maybe some of y'all are familiar with these terms. Spook, coon, nigger, tall baby, eggplant, darky, pickaninny, porch monkey, spade. And Latinos, they call us spick, brownie, wetback, greaseball, beaner, greasy. Native Americans, they call timber nigger, redskin, prairie nigger, chug, Canadian slur, engine, brownie. Now the term black is also a byword, Latino is a byword, Native Americans a byword. All of these things here are byways because they did not exist prior to the 1400s. They were made up by our oppressors. Why? To hide the fact and the truth of who we really are. Next clip. Uh, show them the next verse. Thou shalt carry much seed. Well, let's go down. Let's jump. I want to get to some main point. Go, to, uh, go up. Next clip. Let me see. I just want to get to some points. Come on. Down here. Let me look, 38 to 40, jump to the next clip. I'm just going to get to the key points. Okay, verse 41, please. Let's jump down to verse 41. Verse 41, thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. You shall beget sons and daughters, but you will not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. What are we reading about? Our history. Next clip. Okay, verse 43, jump down to 43. The stranger that was within me. Now remember, when we fled out of Egypt, when well, y'all know the history of Moses and the 12 tribes, when, when the Most High delivered us under the hand of Moses, when we fled out of Egypt, there were other nations that fled with us, and they were called strangers. This is the prophecy. Verse 43 again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. We came out of Egypt, the top nation on the plate, planet, above all nations. But because of our disobedience, God said you would come down very low. Thou shall be the tail. You would be the lowest race. He didn't say if some of you had a lot of money, you wouldn't be. You would all be. We would all be the tail. We would all be very low. But the stranger, meaning the other nations, they would go up very high. That's why they own the banks, the financial institutions. They do the lending. That's why it says, he shall lend to thee, thou shalt not lend to him. They're the ones doing the lendings to us, helping us. Okay? Next clip. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. We've been destroyed, not physically destroyed, but destroyed as a nation. That's why we're not unified as a nation. We've been destroyed as a nation. That's why what we read in Psalms 83, that the name of Israel would be no more in remembrance. We don't remember who we are. We don't. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To do what? To keep his commandments. This is one thing we have always hated as a people. Growing up in a Christian church, one of the famous doctrines in Christianity is God's laws are done away with. Hmm. The laws are done away with. When I was little, but let me tell you a story. Let me tell you a story. Me and my brother being in church, preacher would have a great sermon. The laws are done away with. Now there was a couple of girls that we liked. We didn't feel ashamed at all when many of us boys would take the girls up someplace away from the preacher and the deacons and mess around with them. We were eight, nine, ten. We didn't. Why should we feel shame? You taught us these things was done away with. So why do I need to say sorry, Jesus? When we would steal as young men, there's no shame. Why? Because our mothers, fathers, and preachers have taught us the laws are done away with. Hmm. Okay, so I could do what I want. I could beat somebody up and go, Jesus, I'm sorry. And there's no repercussions. You know, you have, you're going to realize one of the greatest uh, poisons to our people is the black church, what we call the black church. They are the hammer to making sure we do not keep God's commandments. Don't keep them at all. Don't even waste your time. And we're going to touch on that too. Did we finish this? No, sir. Go ahead. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. Right. 
And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. You know what a sign is? A sign identifies where you should go, where you should be, and what to do. That's what a sign does. So Moses says the curses of Deuteronomy 28 would be a sign for, and a wonder and upon your seed. Meaning whoever fits the curses of Deuteronomy 28, those are the Israelites that I'm talking to. So now, watch the next verse. 47. Because thou ser servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Many of our people, we say we love the Lord, right? But here it says, because you serve not the Lord your God with joyfulness. I'll give you an example. Very few of us celebrate God's holidays. Passover, you have Feast of Unleavened Bread, you have uh, Pentecost, which is the Feast of First Fruits, mm -hmm. you have Purim, you have Feast of Dedication, which is Hanukkah, um, which is recorded in John 10. We don't, m most of our people go, no, God's holidays, no. The preacher taught us God's laws are done away with. Don't celebrate that. Like the Sabbath day. That's, that was the first holiday, the Sabbath day. There's, the majority of Christians do not honor the seventh day. They say that. You don't have to do it. Sunday is the new day. All of that goes back to these curses because we had no joy. We have joy in Christmas. We have joy in Thanksgiving. We have joy in Mother's Day. We have joy in Valentine's Day. I don't even know about Valentine's Day. It's a day of orgies. A day of adultery, a day of hormone. We have joy in Father's Day, which goes back to Nimrod. Mother's Day, which goes back to Ceramicus and Isis. These are all false gods that we love. But when it comes to God's days, bah, I'm not going to do that. This is why we went into slavery. Most of says, because you don't serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Look at that. For the abundance of all things, meaning the earth was ours. When we came out of Egypt, everything belonged to us. We had to pick them. Nations were our servants. We had everything. That's what it means, for the abundance of all things. But because we broke his commandments, we became the tail. That's why now we have nothing. Nothing. We can't even get together in a room and have a cordial or, or, or a good conversation without smiling like yeah. him. All angry. These are the curses that came upon us. Now watch this, verse 48. Therefore... Shalt thou serve thine enemies. Notice the word. I want you to notice the word. It says enemies. I didn't make this up. Look in your Bible. It says enemies. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So the Lord sent against us enemies. Go ahead. In hunger. If you want food, you got to serve your enemy. And in thirst. If you want to drink, you got to serve your enemy. And in nakedness. If you want clothes, you have to serve your enemy. And in want of all things. You know what all things mean? It means all things. I'm going to show you how the Lord gets. If you want toilet paper to clean yourself, you have to go to your enemies. You want to, you're born, you got to go to your enemies. You die, you got to go to... You want education, you got to go to your enemies. Watch this. Go ahead. And he... He... Go ahead. ...shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until... He have destroyed thee. Now that's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. And he, because we say everybody went into slavery, but everybody did not have yokes of iron on their neck. Everybody's uh, nationality wasn't changed the way ours was. Everyone's language wasn't changed. Well, it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now this destroyed here doesn't mean physically, because we're all alive in here physically. But we are destroyed as a nation, as a race, as a people. There's no unity. So notice, I'm going to pause here a second. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until, look at the word until, until he have destroyed thee. Because right now, we don't have yokes of iron on our neck. So what does that prove? He took the yoke of iron off of us when we were what? Destroyed. Destroyed here. I'll give you an example. With a, I'll use a, I'll use a dog. I'll use a dog. You have a leash and a chain on a dog. The dog chain can only go from there to here, right here. You keep them like that for a couple of years. By the time you decide to take that off, the dog will automatically stop many times here and not go further because he's been trained to stop at a certain point. That's what training is about. The slaves, we were trained with the yokes of iron to only go but so far. 
When the yokes of iron came off, we were trained not to revolt. We were trained to accept his religions, his politics. We were trained, which caused us to be, proves that we were destroyed. We were destroyed, okay, until he have destroyed me. We are destroyed people. That's why I made the statement at the beginning of the lesson. The first opponents to the Bible is not the white man. It's always black people, our people. Moses prophetically is identifying you, your history, our history. So it says, this nation, the Lord will send, bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth, the symbol would be the eagle, a nation, what, read on? A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Many of our Latino brothers and sisters, some of them as dark as me, will say, they always spoke Spanish. No, you didn't. They say, yeah. When Columbus came, we said, como esta? No, you did not say como esta. You, Spanish was never your native tongue. And that's because of miseducation and not knowing the laws and the prophecies of God. Some of our people think we always spoke the languages we speak. Okay? We were, some of us conquered by the British. We have that British accent. Some of us under America have this American accent. Some of us conquered by the Dutch um, and have a Dutch accent. Um, whoever the Haitians have a French accent. All of these things are because of whoever the Lord sent against us to conquer us. Next clip. Okay, here we go. Here's the eagle. These are the symbols of the nations. Germany, Greece, America. Next one. Okay, verse 50, Shem. A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. A lot of times we watch movies and we see certain of the oppressors, Caucasians, and they are nice to us. They'll help you during the Underground Railroad, help you escape. But that is not what God said. It says, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. They murdered and oppressed us whether we were old, being an extreme age, or very young. In New York, uh, on Wall Street, when they dug up the, what they call the African American burial ground, they found bones of five-year-olds that had chains on the ankles. This is what it goes, nor show favor to the young. They didn't care. That's irrelevant, their age. The Bible, God Almighty is telling you historically what would happen. Now you can accept what he says or not. You know? And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. I want to jump down to verse 60. I want to get to the point. Go to 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The word Egypt here. This is always the question. We walked, when you read about the Israelites, they walked into Egypt. They didn't go there by ships. You didn't need ships to get to Egypt. So what does this word Egypt make reference to? When you go to Exodus, chapter 20, I believe it is. From the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous for the house of bondage. Listen good. Egypt is synonymous for the house of bondage. So when we go back to Deuteronomy 28, 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into the house of bondage again. With what? With ships. With ships. So now, hmm, so you gotta ask yourself, realistically, what race of people went into bondage on ships? Hmm. People, you know this is the audience we always hear. Why the Chinese came over on ships? The Chinese were indentured servants. The East Indians came over. They were indentured servants. You have to put all the clues in Deuteronomy 28. What race of people had jokes of iron on their necks? Their race was changed. Their language was changed. They came over on ships. Hmm. That puts all the other races on earth out. It identifies us as a collective. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ships. Mm -hmm. 
By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way Moses said it would happen, that's the way it happened, whether you accepted it or not. Now the proof is, just like some of us in here, when Moses told us that, remember our state of being, we were the greatest nation. We didn't listen to Moses. We said, nah, what you're saying, we don't accept Moses. We are the top nation on the earth. So we disregarded what Moses said. We kept breaking the law. And this is where we are today. So likewise now, here in this room, we're discussing this. Some of you right now, the air bubble maybe, I don't accept that. But that doesn't make this not true. Whether you accept it or not, read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. This still happened. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way God told Moses to tell us, that's the way it happened. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. Right. That homeland we went to, the promised land, you ain't going to see that no more. Go ahead. And there. There. Once you got off the ships. And there. Go ahead. And there. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies. With friends. There's enemies. Friends. friends. Enemies. Friends. Sold unto your enemies. You know, I always stress the words of the Bible because the Bible's telling you reality. Our Christian brainwashing causes the problem. It's like this does not compute. This does not compute. Warning, warning, danger. Because God is saying enemies, we are saying no, no friends. <laughs> On my job, there's many friends I have. We all have associates, friendly Caucasians, people of other nations. That does not change what God says. You everyone understand that? This is the truth, whether you accept or not. It says, there you shall be sold unto your enemies. For what? For bondmen. Meaning slave men. And bond women. Slave women. And listen. And so, wait, 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 wait. You women, you're not getting away from the man. Understand that. We were brought here together. We are leaving together. Amen. We are one people. God knows sometimes... I'm not with you, you low-life Negro men. Listen, we went into captivity together. We are leaving captivity together. That's why it says for bondmen and bondwomen. We are connected. Read. And no man shall buy you. You know what it says? No man shall buy you. It means this is an old Quaker word, which means redeem you or save you. No man shall save you. We looked for Marcus Garvey to save us. He failed. Martin Luther King, he failed. Harry Tubman, she failed. Uh, Malcolm X, he failed. There's one Savior. Now, watch this. New Testament. Because notice it says enemies, right? Let's go to New Testament. Let's see if Jesus changed anything. Because there's a Christian thought that Jesus Christ did away with the Old Testament. Everything that is written is no valid. It's not valid today. Luke 1, 68. Luke chapter 1. Verse 68, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Watch this. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we, that we, that we, should be saved from who? From our enemies. From our enemies. This is the same talk as the Old Testament. That's what I want y'all to see. Because there's a disconnect between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's saying the same thing. It's not saying nothing different. The purpose of Christ is to save us from our enemies. Read on. <clears throat> that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate us. So, these men could not do it. They didn't have the power to do it. Only Jesus the Christ, whose hair is white like wool, his arms and his feet like in color to burnished brass, burned in the fire. He's the only Savior. I want all of y'all to understand that, okay? Now, from there, let's get some more. Joel chapter 3. Watch this. What I'm going to show you now is the slave trade in the Holy Bible. We showed you slavery. Now I'm going to show you some more to show you. It's not just in Deuteronomy where it's written. It's written in the book of Joel. You have to learn this. Because anytime you say you are West Indian, you are Haitian, Dominican, Afro-American, you're telling the world you are ignorant to who you are. And you are not born again. 
Because to be born again, you have to start all over again. First, knowing who your God is. Second, knowing who you are. And that's why people fall off the horse. All we do in these churches is sing and dance, many of us, and roll around and clap our hands. That's not what the Bible's talking about. When you read 1 Samuel 2 and 3, he's, the Most High says he is a God of knowledge. To be a God of knowledge means he wants you to know something. Know who he is, what his will is, and know who you are. Many people say, oh, I'm a, I know who I am, I'm a child of God. What do you mean by that? God created everybody. Yes, he did, but who are you? There's over 18 nations mentioned in the Bible. Which one are you? How you hear silence? Because you don't know. Now it's time to be born again. Find out who you are. Joel 3 and 1, please. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, mm -hmm. I will also gather all nations. Now this is the part I wanted y'all to listen to. I told y'all that war is coming. It is imminent that we as a people know who we are. We just found out the reason for Christ's coming to save us from who? Our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Many times we ignore that. No, 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 no. Christ said, I'm coming to save, just like Moses saved us from Pharaoh in, in Africa. Christ said, I'm coming to save you from Babylon. And we go, no, no, we want to fight. We want to fight. All right, keep fighting. Your arm's too short to box with God. Read that again, I'm sorry. From verse 1. Joel 3. When, Joel 3 and 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. Meaning God's going to bring us back to him. Go ahead. I will also gather all nations. This is what I'm talking about. I will also gather all nations. Let's see if God's gathering all nations for deliverance and repentance or war and destruction. Read and will bring them down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat. The Valley of Jehoshaphat is in the Middle East. It extends from the area of Israel over to Iraq along the Euphrates River. Go ahead. And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. The purpose of the upcoming war is God pleading with the nations for his people, Israel. So now you might say, I still think Israel is the people, the white people in the land of Israel. Let's see what he says further. He's going to describe what happened to his people. Go ahead. Whom they have scattered among the nations. Whom they have scattered among the nations. How? Slavery. We were scattered amongst the nations. Go ahead. And parted my land. The land of Israel is parted between two primary groups today. The Palestinian Arabs and the Caucasian who calls himself the Jews. That's Esau, Edom. Read that part again, and they have what? And, uh -huh. and parted my land. So they have parted. God is telling you, the real Israelites have been scattered, and the nations have parted God's land. So when you look on the news, you see who parted the land, the Palestinians and the white men. They're the ones fighting over that land. Why? Because that is the center of creation on this earth. When you read about the Garden of Eden, that's where it was at. Like it says in Galatians about Jerusalem, which is above us free, is the mother of us all. That's where it stands, life came from. So everyone wants that land. God said that is the choice land. In Ezekiel, he says, when the true Israelites return, it shall bud like the Garden of Eden. Yes, East Eden, E-D-E-N, Eden, Eden. Over there now, you see dust. You see arid, arid land. So... What are we reading about here in Joel? That the true Israelites were scattered and the nations have parted God's land. Watch that. He gets more descriptive, though. Read. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people. You know what it means to cast lots? Come on back. Go back up. Let me see some of these signs. Go back up. I want to show you what it means by cast lots. Come on. Right here. Right here. Right here. What it says they have cast lots for my people means they bid for us. They bid for us. Whatever the price, the going price was, for a male buck or a female, they bid. That's what it means. They cast lots for us. Read. And have given a boy for an harlot. When it says they've given a boy for an harlot, they would find some of the largest and black males to be breeders. They call the men breeders. Like, let's say he's six foot eight, 
300 pounds of muscle. They said he would be an excellent worker, an excellent breeder. And they, he would be a cost a lot of money, and they would use him to breed with all the women so that their babies would be larger and able to do greater work for them. That's what it means. Read that part again, and what? And have given a boy for an harlot. Meaning they made us breeders. Go ahead. And sold a girl for wine. And sold a girl for wine. That's in your history books today. They said the girls, people were sold for musket guns and wine. That did not happen to all nations. That happened to us. So what are we reading? Bible prophecy, which has now become our history. What we at one time thought was prophecy has become the past for us. That happened in 1620, 1700s, 1800s. But it's, it's relevant for today. You know why? Verse 2, one more time. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. So God says, I'm going to make this war happen for your sakes. Why? Because he wants to give us back our land. He can't give the land back to us and his other nations there. He says, I'm going to plead with those nations. And when God pleads with the nations, he's not sitting down saying, okay, Palestinian, can you please have a talk with me? Okay, Mr. White, man, can we have a conversation? When God pleads, he pleads with destruction. I'm going to show you that. Hold on. I'm going to show you that's what it means. Isaiah 65 and 15, or is it 66, 15? 66. 66, 15. I will plead with the nations. Let's see what it says. From the book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 15. Uh, excuse me, verse 16. Isaiah 66, verse 16. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. That's how God pleads with the nations. He kills them. When it says, and the slain of the Lord shall be many, he's coming to kill a lot of people. He's not, I, you know, Grandma, I always reflect back to my childhood. I, I, we were never taught stuff like this. We were always taught about apple pie and blueberries and flowers and goodness and holiness and righteousness, which is a part of the Bible, but it's not the full understanding of the Bible, because he's coming back to kill. So now let's go back to Joel 3, uh, verse 2 again. Joel 3, verse 2. I will also gather all nations, bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. They have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So this coming world war that everyone's trying to prevent is for your benefit, our benefit. That's what it's all about. You should not be praying, Lord, don't come back. No. You want the Lord to come back. Christ said in Luke, when you see these things happen, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Yes, That's all to save us from our enemies. Let's read on in Joel. Continue reading. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for an harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. Meaning a party. Go ahead. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? Tyre and Zidon. See, there's more uh, nation names that we don't know who they are. Tyre and Zidon. Watch this. Give me the Bible dictionary. Tyre and Zidon came out of the lineage of Ham, with Noah's three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Tyre and Zidon come from Ham. Let's see who Ham is. Once you identify who the Hamites are, you'll be able to identify who Tyre and Zidon are. Get the Bible dictionary and look up Ham, H-A-M. Sometimes many people pronounce it Kem. That's when you hear people say the Kemetic community. It comes from the Hebrew word Kem which is Ham in English. Right? Ham from the compact, from the Bible dictionary. The youngest son of Noah, born probably about 96 years before the flood, and one of the eight persons to live through the flood. He became the progenitor the, of... The word progenitor means father of... Go ahead. Of the dark races. So Ham became the father of the dark races. Watch this. Not... The Negroes. Wait, stop. The scholars wrote 
that they know Ham is the father of all the dark races, but he's not the father of the Negroes. For them to write that, that means they know who we come from out of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They said they don't come from Ham. This group, they know comes from Shem. Watch this. Not the Negroes, but the Egyptians. So Ham is father of the Egyptians. Ethiopians. Ethiopians. Libyans. Libyans. And Canaanites. And Canaanites. So, when we go back now to Joel 3, I believe it was verse 4. Tyre and Zidon, when you read in Chronicles, come from the lineage of Ham. These are what we call today Africans. Africans. Go ahead. Joel 3, verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon? I'm going to make it plain for you. I'm going to say it plain. What have you to do with me, O Africans? During the slave trade, it was the Africans and the Arabs who sold a particular group of people to the Caucasians. That's why it's called the slave trade. There were three groups involved, Africans, Arabs, and Caucasians. Those are the three main groups historically. Watch this. In all the coast of Palestine? Wait, oh, the Palestine are the Palestinians, the Arabs, the ones you feel sorry for. Oh, the Palestinians have no weapons and the white man's blowing them up. You feel bad? God says it's going to happen. So, so far God identified Tyre and Zidane, which were Africans, and Palestine, the Palestinians, which are Arabs. Go ahead. Will you render me a recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Recompense means payback, judgment. God says, what you did to my people, I'm going to do it back to you. Read on. Verse 5. Because ye have taken my silver and my gold. Not only did they enslave us, the Bible says they robbed us of all our riches. Go ahead. And have carried into your temples my goodly, pleasant things. Read. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. Have you sold unto the Grecians? Who are the Grecians? The Greeks. The Greeks. So look at the names. He named Tyre and Zidon, which were Africans. He named Palestinians, which were Arabs. Then he names Grecians, which is white men. But what does he call us? Read verse 6 again. What does he call us? The children also of Judah. And the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians. So it says Judah and Jerusalem were sold, not Africans. We like to think, oh, I'm African. Watch this. Let me show you something. Here's another book. Now, I got a lot of books. Because some of you might think, oh, they base everything just on the Bible. The Bible is the main book. But every other book that's out there, if it has the filter with the Bible. Many of our people say that they're African. Because that's what they taught us. I'm going to go to page 74 of this book called The Black Image and the White Mind. The Debate on Afro-American Character and Destiny, written from 1817 to 1914 by George M. Friedrichson. I'm going to go to page 74. Now, y'all can get these books on your own. Watch this. Listen good to what this scholar wrote, so-called scholar. In the 1840s, Morton collaborated with George R. Glidden, an Egyptologist, who provided him with mummy heads and information about the racial significance of Egyptian tomb inscriptions. So the question was about the Egyptian tombs, was the question. Go ahead. In crania, adip, this is a long word, adipity. The cranium is the skeletal development. Go ahead. Published in 1844, Watch this. Morton pointed out that both cranial and archaeological evidence showed that the Egyptians were not Negroes. The Egyptians were not Negroes, meaning what, we, what we're called, our people over here. He said that's two different races. Go ahead. As abolitionists and colonizationists had maintained. Now they were black. The Egyptians were black. But they were not Negroes, meaning our people over here. That's what he said. Watch this. And in, in that, in fact, blacks have been re, uh, relegated to the same servile position in ancient Egypt as in modern America. So he says the blacks on this side are in the same position as the blacks that was in ancient Egypt in servitude. So who was that? 
the Israelites. The Israelites. In order for him to write that, he got to know who we are. Is, is there more? No, sir. So that was it. So he has to know. These scholars know who we are. We're the ones who don't know who we are. So, so far, again, I'm just going to rehash. Okay. <laughs> We're about to break. We're about to break. We've discussed the curses of Deuteronomy 28. That because the Israelites broke God's commandments, they would have yokes of iron on their neck. They would be known by proverbs and byrords, meaning different nationalities, different names. Uh, they would go into slavery on ships and be sold unto their enemies. All these things, in a nutshell, identifies who the Israelites saw, the 12 tribes of Israel. We are, whatever little names we have in our minds, it's all false. Whether it's West Indian, Haitian, Guyanese, Trinidadian, Barbadian, all that is a fiction of your imagination. Now it's wake-up time. It's time for us to truly become born again and realize the mysteries of the Bible have been hidden from us from the 1400s on up till today. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Times. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.